Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. This morning, uh, I want to speak with you on a subject which I don't know if possible we can make it a series. Um, and we will look at many things, a few things underneath it. And the subject is titled, Knowledge is Not Enough. Can someone say with me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Knowledge is not enough. Knowledge is good. Hallelujah. Knowledge is good, but knowledge is not enough. I know the Bible says that my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. That's true. Amen. Knowledge is the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. So knowledge is not enough. And if you can just keep that phrase in your mind, maybe it will help you and I to accomplish certain things that God had proposed concerning us. Amen. Glory to Jesus. I know there's a phrase that says knowledge is power. Amen. Well, knowledge could be power. But the power that is not put in use is a useless power. Has no value. Has nothing to offer. Amen. If you turn the switch off on the wall over there, the light goes off. But the electrical wire surrounding this building, they carry something that is called power. Right? Amen. There is power there, you know. But it has no value because it's, if you don't turn the switch on, what value does it have? What benefit does it have? So I agree. Knowledge is power, but if it does not do what it's supposed to do, it is not enough. Amen? Uh, someone said knowledge is no power. Amen. Knowledge is no power. It says knowledge plus action is power. Amen, church? Are you with me this morning? Glory to Jesus. It says knowledge with action equals power. That's when you can talk about power. Power is defined not as what someone carries, but it's defined as a rate. Physicists in the house. Knowledge is defined as a rate at which what? At which work is done. Amen. Are there scientists in the house this morning? Yes, <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's the rate at which work is done. Hallelujah. If work is not done, then knowledge, power, you can't define power. Someone said power is the ability to act. The ability to act. The ability to do something. Power becomes only useful when it is activated. So knowledge is not, is never enough. Amen. Amen. That's why the scripture says, in all you're getting. What did it say to get? Amen. Get what? Get understanding. And understanding there is more than just knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you can learn something and memorize something, but has no understanding. It does not produce understanding in us. Are you getting me? You just memorize it. All of us, some of us who are in school, are just trying to get through school. You know, after we finish school, then we start to understand all the principles that we are taught in school and start to apply them, hallelujah, when we get into the field. But what we are trying to do is through, get what? Get through the school. So we memorize the formula. We memorize, most of the formula you learn in school, you memorize it. And then you regurgitate it just as it's given to you. And that's why some of us cannot uh, invent anything. <laughs> Because we have no understanding on the basic principles of those formulas. But I pray this morning God will grant us understanding. Amen. Even in this message, God will grant us understanding. Amen. But I want us to go home to know and understand that knowledge is not just enough. Amen. Amen. Martin Luther King says, knowledge, power is the ability to achieve purpose and effect change. So when you define, when you say knowledge is power, we're saying knowledge is the ability to achieve purpose and produce change. If a change is not produced, 
because power will change when electricity flow, when the power flow, it will change alternating current, right? Alternating waves. And then it produces something. It produces an effect. It produces a change. Hallelujah. Power, knowledge is powerful, I agree. But knowledge without action, knowledge without uh, 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 action, knowledge without, uh, you know, doing something about it is, 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 uh, is, is not uh, productive. It's not useful. It's useless. Amen. The prodigal son we read in the book of Luke, we know this prodigal son had one knowledge. He went to his father, collected everything that the father had, right? Amen. And I mean, that belongs to him, his heritage. And then left to another city. And the Bible says he spent everything that he took and became poor. And now he had nothing with him up to the point that he was eating just the leftover things, food that the pig had. But one day the Bible says it came to him, verse 17 of that scripture. It says, and when it came to himself, came to himself means that understanding came to him. Hallelujah, right? It came to him, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger. Powerful, right? The understanding came. Ooh. Hallelujah. He has been eating with pigs. He has been begging for food. Eating from the dumpster. Then understanding came. So, oh my God, my father. He has so much that even his slaves have enough bread. That even the slaves had more than enough so that when they had what they need to have, they still have enough to spare. That is powerful, isn't it? But it doesn't do anything. Hallelujah. That knowledge didn't do anything for him. But he had no knowledge. And in verse 18, the Bible says, it now says, I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Luke chapter 15, verse 17 and 18 is what we talked about just now. Until he said what? I will arise and go to my father. He had the understanding that his father has much. The knowledge came to him. But it wouldn't help him. He could still be eating pigs left over. But the only time that that knowledge helped him was when he said, I will do something. Knowledge is powerful, but knowledge is not enough. In actual fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1b says, Knowledge sometimes puffs up. So knowledge can be good. Knowledge can be really negative sometimes. It says, knowledge puffs up. It's not now as touching or concerning those things offered into, unto idols. It said, this is what I have to say unto you. We know that sometimes knowledge, what? Knowledge puffs up. I pray that we don't break under the puffering of knowledge. Amen? Amen. Is there any, if, if there's any English like that? That we are not destroyed under the puffering of knowledge. Now, the truth, the way I'm going to church this morning is that in church we have a lot of knowledge. I say you don't know, it's not true. We know a lot of stuff. You know a lot of stuff. Some of you can quote Genesis from Genesis to Revelation. So I'm teaching you Bible. I'm just deceiving myself. I'm preaching to the choir. The people that actually need this message are not here in the house. It says knowledge pours up. But loss edifies. Then verse 2 says, And if anyone thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. If you think you know something, if you think you know anything, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 2 says, You know nothing yet as you ought to know. If I think I know everything, no, there's still something that I need to know. Maybe what I even know is even the wrong knowledge. 
It says, if any man thinks he knows anything yet, knowledge puffs up. If any man thinks he knows anything yet, he says, no, not yet. Those things that he ought to know, he knows nothing yet. I like that. He knows nothing. Someone say he knows nothing. So I said to the person that you don't know anything. You think you know. I pray that God will continue to give us everything that we need to know. In the mighty name of Jesus. Paul was speaking to Timothy. He said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15. He says, since you were a child, you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise since you are what? A child. Some of you, since you are a child. Mommy and daddy has been taking you to uh, um, children church, children ministry. Amen? And that wisdom leads to salvation. Hallelujah. Praise God. You have been saved. We have been saved. Hallelujah. That all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching Amen. For showing people. Uh, I didn't put it there. For doing what? For showing people what is wrong in their lives. For doing what? I can hear you, church. Uh -huh. For correcting faults and for what? Uh, for teaching how to live right. Using the scripture. That's using this Bible that you know. I know you feel right from childhood. You have been taught. All of us have been taught, including my own very self. Amen? I'm included. We have been taught the scripture. And the scripture is inspired by God. It's useful to teach us. Hallelujah. I pray that we we'll accept teaching this morning in the name of Jesus. It says for showing people what is wrong. There are certain things that is wrong in our lives. Would you admit it that there are certain things that is wrong in your life and in my life? We have to start from that point of understanding. Amen? We have to know that there are certain things that is wrong. We have to admit that there are certain things that is wrong. Someone said anybody who admits that they are guilty or they have done something wrong, that's the beginning of their forgiveness. We have to know, showing people what is wrong in their lives for correcting fault. Sometimes there will be fault. But we must, this scripture is available. This knowledge of the scripture is available for what? Let's do teaching together now. Amen. Hallelujah. For correcting and for teaching how to live right. Teaching how to live. That is the essence of the gospel that we have received. That is the essence of the scripture. That is the knowledge we have been acquiring since childhood. Hallelujah. But I want to say this morning that this knowledge is not just enough. It's not just enough. We can apply this same principle to finances. You know, knowledge. A lot of us who have knowledge about. I have books on my shelf. Different kind of books about how to become rich. <laughs> and I've read them, and all of them teach the same principles. <laughs> I have the knowledge. I can, you know, I, I'll, I'll make this confession. I don't want to come and teach about becoming rich, having money, and the, I, I have the knowledge. But what I ask myself is, do I have anything in myself to really show for it. So I'm saying, I'm waiting for God to help me to have something to show for it. <laughs> that I'm able to apply those principles and I have results and I can show those answers. Then I can stand there confidently hey, that will give someone a cloth to wear. You will look at what that person is wearing first. Knowledge is powerful. You all know the Bible very much. Even some of you know the Bible more than me. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. But that's the essence of the Bible. To do all these things for us. Teaching us how to live right. Using the scripture. And it says now, the persons who serve God will be what? Oh my goodness. What does capable mean? Huh? Able to do. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. 
so that when we learn all of these things, using the scriptures, we'll be capable having all that is needed to, to do. Knowledge is not enough until you get to the doing part. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he or she reap. Glory to Jesus. James chapter 1, 22 through 25 says, but don't just listen to God's word. Amen. James 1, 25. And I picked different translations that we can understand because sometimes we read some translation that gives us a lot of hard time to understand. It says, don't just what? Let's read together. That's up there. I thank God for uh, Pastor Van Joe this morning. It's like God is speaking to you concerning the message this morning. I like your prayer. Your prayer number one is great. We need to pray for nations, but we also need to pray for ourselves. Prayer number two. God is in this house. Amen. 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 And the way he communicates with all of us, we don't talk. I don't ask him, who is praying? What are you praying on? No. But the Holy Spirit will just minister and say, this is where we are going and this is what should be our focus together. And he will bring us together in unity. So, but don't just listen to God's words. You must do what he says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself. You walk away and forget what. Let me quickly move because my time is running fast. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 4. Moses was talking to the children of Israel. He says, it is the Lord your God. You must follow. It is him. You must what? Uh, let's do this together. Please be excited. I'm excited. It is the Lord your God. You must what? You must. And him you must revere. It says, do what is command. Keep it under the pillow. Keep it under your bed. Keep it in your car. Put the cross on the front of your windshield. Keeping is doing. It says keep his command. Obey him. Serve him. And hold fast to him. Now, this is where I'm going this morning. I'm not here to um, put anybody down. We all are work in progress. Amen. Hallelujah. Myself inclusive. But this is where I'm going. Just to let us know, no, knowledge is not enough. But Paul says something in, in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. It says, now that I have already obtained all this, or I've already arrived at my goal, it says, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. And it says again in 13, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet. So I've taken hold. I think you can, you can lie on this scripture, right? You can take it and make it your own. Amen? I think all of us can. All of us can. We can say like Paul is saying here. It says, but I press on to take hold for that which Christ took hold of me. I, have not cons- I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, straining forward, what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which Christ has called me to heaven. World. And I think that was a lot of English. There's some part of it that I didn't really understand where. I says, but I press on to take hold for that which Christ took hold of. I said, what is that that Christ took hold of me? I try to understand the little pieces and phrases in the scripture. He says, I try to take hold. What did he take hold of me? What is he talking about? I went to another translation, amplified version. It says, now that I've already obtained it, the goal of being Christ-like or the goal of our already been made perfect, but I actively press on so that I may take hold, he's using the word hold again, I was like, my goodness, of that perfection for which Christ took hold of me and made me his own. 
let's jump to another version. I look at that, I was like, my goodness, I just took hold, took hold of perfection. But this, 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 this version just jumped out at me. NLT. It says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I'm already rich perfection. Anyone has that testimony in the house this morning? Anyone here have reached perfection? Anyone have already taken hold of that which Christ? It says, but I press on to possess. Somebody said, I press on to do what? To possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. Come here, bro, please come. I do what? I press on to possess. Christ already looked at you. And Christ already possessed you and look at you. And Christ said, you're what? You're perfect. Thank you. Christ already said that. Concerning you, Christ is looking at you as someone who is what? Perfect. You are perfect. That's why it says, be you perfect. When God is saying something, he says, be you perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Bible says him that knew no sin was made to be seen, that I can be made the perfection, the righteousness of God. Jesus took hold of you. Amen? Is anyone here like that this morning? Jesus took hold of you and said you are perfect. That's how Jesus is looking at you. You are. But Paul said, I press on because Christ already looked at me and said I am perfect. But I press on to possess the same possession. Hallelujah. To possess what Christ already see in me. Hallelujah. He says, I'm not there yet. I'm not there. If I tell you I'm there, I'm lying to you. But I am. You know, God said you are perfect. You are perfect. Say, I'm perfect. That's how Christ sees you. That's how he possesses you. But it didn't stop there. You can't say, Christ sees me as perfect and I can go. No, Paul said, no. Yes, that's the perfection. Christ sees me. He says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. I have not. I have not. But I focus on this one thing, this one thing, that that thing that Christ has already possessed me, that I am perfect. I am going to focus on this thing. Hallelujah. And I'm going to press on that everything that I do is targeted at meeting. You know, salvation is not by works. That's not what I'm saying this morning. You can't walk for salvation. It's by grace. Hallelujah. But that's something that God sees in you. Hallelujah. That says, if you said you are the head of the household, they say, uh, we call you something. If they call you something, you have to be that something, right? Isn't it? That's what we're saying. If they call you something, you have to be. If they say you are righteous, then what else do you have to do? That's what we're saying here. If they say you are perfect, then you have to walk towards that perfection. They cannot be calling you thief. And then you are carrying somebody's else's property. I, mean, I think that's even applicable. <laughs> because that's what Tim does. But Christ sees you. And he said, no, you know, I have not reached there yet. I'm forgetting those things which are behind. And I'm looking forward for what is ahead. I am pressing on. Thank you, sir. You may be seated. I am pressing on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize, which God has called me. I like that transition. It says that I press on. To possess that perfection for which Christ has first possessed me. Galatians chapter 2 verse 22 talks about the fruit of the spirit. Talks about love. I am pressing forward to love more. Talks about forbearance. I am pressing on. Have I reached it? Have I gained it completely? No, but I am pressing on. 
that I can forbear some more. Hallelujah. He talks about kindness. I know sometimes I get mean. Sometimes I get upset. Sometimes I do certain things that are not right. Sometimes I ignore people. He says, no, I've not reached it yet. God, that's how Christ sees me. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. If you get them, you can read it. I say the fruit of the Spirit. Pressing on. Somebody say pressing on. Press on. Somebody say pressing on. Press on. Hallelujah. I have so much, but the time is gone. But I press on to possess. So we don't just sit down. You can have all the knowledge about what he has done. But until we put it into action, we cannot do anything. Um, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. I, I want to do this. You give me, you, media, could you please give me just a few minutes? I'm sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit does what? And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and all the ends of the heart. When you say witnesses, witnesses is not just somebody who speaks, somebody who shows in action. Amen? In, in do give. Isn't it? In character. Yes. Amplified Bible says, um, but you will receive power and ability. Someone say power and ability. Uh -huh. Just when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you'll be my witness. The word power here is the Greek word dynamis. And it's used about 120 times in the New Testament. Hallelujah. It refers to strength. It refers to power. And it refers to ability. Hallelujah. When you have the power of the Holy Ghost, when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, it's not just to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Thank you for all the speaking in tongues. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shakalava, shuko, koko, obo. Praise God. We can speak all those tongues. But the most important thing is what? Paul said in 1 Corinthians, he says, if I speak with the tongue of an angel, if I speak with the tongue of angels, and I do not do some of these things, or my life does not show, the, so, so the Holy Ghost will give us ability, hallelujah. And I mean, the Bible says, but when the Spirit I like this translation. I mean, when the spirit of what? No, this is another translation. Aramaic translation. It says, when the spirit of holiness. I don't have it on my slide. Okay. When the spirit of holiness will come upon you. And you shall receive power. Hallelujah. You shall be my witnesses. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus was talking to them. He says, don't go out trying to do anything. Just wait. Wait. The scripture before that scripture was verse 6. Verse 6, they asked Jesus Christ. They said, Jesus, now that Jesus has, uh, was, uh, is the English or uh, something else, that Jesus Christ is risen, right? He came to them, showed himself to them. Hallelujah. They now ask him, because in that chapter, when they died first and they nailed him to the cross, they thought that was the end of the Messiah that they were expecting. They lost hope. They lost everything. But he rose up again. He showed himself to all the disciples. And then they asked him, Master, now that you are back again, in verse 6, it says, they said, they gathered around and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Is this this time that you have come to free Israel and restore the kingdom? We have to understand that this is a Roman Empire. This, the time that they lived was the time of Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire was oppressing them. There was so much great corruption within the Roman Empire. And the children of Israel has been waiting for what? A Messiah. Somebody that will come to free them from the bondage of sin. Bondage of, you know, they are bondage of the Roman Empire. But we are under the bondage of those things we are not able to do. Hallelujah. Sin, lust, lasciviousness, all the works of the flesh. It's a bondage, isn't it? It's a bondage. Let's accept it. You, Paul said, the, the things I want to do, I can't do them. Now the things that I don't want to do, those are the things that I can't do. So they asked him, I said, are you now ready to, is it time now? Verse 6, right? It says, is it time now? 
that you will release us and restore the kingdom so that there will be a king from Israel that will be in charge, that will be in charge again like the time of David. You know, at that time, before Jesus came in the synagogue, when they go to synagogue, there's a prayer they pray there. It's, uh, I, I believe it's uh, called uh, Binyan Yerushalayim. Binyan Yerushalayim. That's the name of the prayer. It's the 14th prayer of Amdila, Amida. That's what it's called. And it's also known as the 18th, 18th benediction. So they will pray this prayer every time they meet. That's the 14th prayer of Amida. Or you can call it, they call it 18th prayer of benediction. Can we pray it together, church? Huh? You want the English version? Can someone help me, media? Can you help us see what it says? No, no, I said media now. I don't know if you can read this. Hebrew. You can read the Hebrew? Beli Rushalayim Ircha, Berachamim Tashuv, Betishkon Betocha, Kasher Dibarta, Uvne Ota Bekorov, Veyamenu Binyan Olam. Vekise David Mehera Letocha Tachin, Baruchata Aronai, Bone Yerushalayim. Return in compassion to your city Jerusalem and rest within it as you have said. Rebuild it speedily and in our days, a structure forever. And may you establish the throne of David within Jerusalem speedily. Blessed are you, Lord, the builder of Jerusalem. They will recite this prayer every time they meet in the temple in the synagogue. And so they are asking him, they've been praying, before Jesus came, they are asking him, is it that time yet? And in verse 8, he answered them. He said, but you will receive uh, power. You will receive ability. You, so you are under pressure, you are under bondage, you are under oppression, you are under slavery right now, seems like. But you will receive power. When you receive power, you know, you become my witnesses. What he's saying is that, look at I understand the prayer. I understand the question. But look, at you have to now change your mindset, change your ori- orientation. When they receive the power, the timid leader, the back-to-fishing leader, the back-row leader, Peter, you all remember him very well. After he had received power, even in the Roman Empire, stood up among the Sahedrin, stood up in the temple, and spoke with what? With boldness. He spoke with boldness. He spoke to a point. Sometimes the apostles spoke to a point. Sometimes like one day, 3,000 people, they joined the church. When you receive the power, they are no longer timid under that oppression. They are no longer a back road leader. They have an enabling power. Hallelujah. They have an enabling ability. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Luke chapter 4 from verse 1 to 2. The Bible says Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was what? It was full of the Holy Spirit and then left Jordan. I was led into the, spi- left into the wilderness. Now, you know, praise the Lord, somebody. I, I, must conf- I must admit to you. It was this last time I was reading again that this scripture came out with the real meaning. I thought I know what he was saying. Because I was thought Jesus went to the wilderness to fast and pray. And when he fasted and prayed, he came out with power. And so when the devil now attempted to tempt him, he was ready. You know. But the Bible tells us here, before he went to the wilderness, he was already full of power. And when he was full of the Ghost. The scripture here says that even those 40 days, every day of the 40 days in the wilderness, he was tempted. Did you see that before? Oh, sorry, I, I must be. See, that's why the Bible says, he that thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing yet. <laughs> huh? Luke chapter 4. Where are you still doing Acts? I mean, look. It says, he was tempted of the devil every day. He had nothing during those days. And at the end of that, that day, he was hungry. And because he was hungry, it, it was recorded there what the devil did. And we saw how Jesus did it. John chapter 14 verse 30. The Bible says 
no, actually, uh, John chapter 4, I mean, Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Same Luke chapter 4, verse 14. The Bible says, Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. He returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the news about him spread around. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and with power. Knowledge is not enough. We need a power, the ability to do, to become what God has already called us to be. Hallelujah. It's not about how many scriptures that I know. In actual fact, some of us, you only need one chapter of the Bible. That's the only thing you need. And if you can act out the only one chapter in the Bible, you have fulfilled God's purpose for your life. Amen? If we can even pause for a minute, stop for a minute, and just walk on a verse and put it into action. It says the word gives us power, but we have to put it into action. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 2, 12 says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, somebody say obey. As you have always what? Philippians 2, 12. As you have always obeyed, not only in my presence. Obey means to do what it says, right? Obey the word. When the word of God says something, you do what it says. It says, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to act both to will and to do is good pleasure. It is not the hearers alone that will be blessed. It says only the doers will be blessed. Shall we rise on our feet? Hallelujah. This morning and just pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, give me a heart to obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Do we have a microphone in the front? Give me a heart to obey. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Give me a heart to obey. I will work out my salvation. Amen. And the teaching of Jesus Christ in every aspect of my life. Hallelujah. Knowledge is not enough. But give me a heart to be an obedient servant. Hallelujah. Give me a heart to work out my salvation. Christ has already possessed me. I am perfect already. But I press on. Hallelujah. So that I can take hold of that perfection that he has seen me. Pray that Lord God Almighty, I know that I will have to give an account of my life and that you are watching every decision that I'm taking. In the name of Jesus. Help me, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your spirit be with me. Lord, help me. Grant me the power of the Holy Spirit that I can walk out, walk out my salvation. Praise, praise be to God. That I will not stop, but I will press on. Hallelujah. I will keep walking. I will keep pressing on. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we say with me, Holy Spirit, give me a heart to obey. Holy Spirit, give me a heart to obey. Holy Spirit, Give me a heart to obey. I will walk out my salvation and the teachings of Jesus Christ in every area of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will carry out this process knowing that I will have to give an account for my life and that you are watching every decision that I'm making. You are watching every step that I'm taking. Though I take personal responsibility, I cannot take pride in my self-righteousness. Because of this, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will give me the desire to live righteous, to live holy, to live perfect. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray you will give me power to obey your desires. Empower me to live an obedient life. You are my provider. Provide means for my obedience and commitment to you in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray